Hello everyone, Guardian E here with another live reaction and first impression video for Fire Emblem Heroes. Tonight we should be getting the reveal of the next mythic hero to join the game in just a day or two. Now, uh, current guesses, I think names that have been floating around, Anankos, uh, Ashira, and Not. Uh, those are my three guesses. I wouldn't be surprised if any of them uh, are the revealed unit for tonight. I'm not looking at the screen right now, so I'm going to go ahead and hit play so we can be surprised at the reveal together at the same time. So let's get started. All right, we'll wait for the title to disappear here. There we go. All right, a new mythic hero joins the battle. I like the purple haze in the back. I don't know if that's new or not. Uh, oh, hey, that's Ashira, Order Goddess. Okay. She looks pretty glorious, I have to say. Uh, Order's Sentence, Glacies, Attack Res Ideal 3, Order's Restraint, she has a unique C slot. All right, art's pretty beautiful. I, I know a lot of people are, whoa, what is that? Yo, she calls the... She calls a shot from the heavens? Oh, that's the first time we've had a cut-in like that for the animation. That's... that's really cool. I hope that's a precedent for future animations. They could do so much with that. That's really neat. Okay, she's colorless. I didn't even catch that. Okay, we've got Legendary Azura. Got Roy. Ellie Wood, okay. Peony. Okay, Corrin as well. Triandra. Ooh, Freya. Ronan. Uh, Azel. Yeah. Claude. Dadu. Colorless is shaping up, shaping up to be very, very spicy. Alright, so. So starting on the 31st of May, the last day of May, we are getting Ashira. I know a lot of people have been waiting for her. Uh, and, and here she is, finally dropping into the game. She looks, honestly, pretty magnificent. I really like the art. Uh, it's going to be seven days, of course, as per usual, with a Legendary or Mythic Hero banner. And alongside her, right out of the gate, I see that there's Legendary Corrin, and there is also Claude. Um, so both of those are obviously fantastic units. We're going to go ahead and re um, rewind, take a closer look at Ashira's art, as well as her skills, as well as the banner as a whole, just to see sort of what colors I think take priority on the banner, and if this is a banner ultimately worth summoning on. So let's take a closer look. So yeah, it's been a long time coming, but she is here, finally. She's got this really... such a grand voice as well. There's a real deity quality to her voice, of course. I love the this the shower of, of lights and sparkles that are coming off of her, just like dancing in front of her. She's in this inky black, sleek, slinky, slim fit dress. The hem of the dress and the sleeves adorned with this brilliant display of feathers. She has that very regal headdress as she's just kind of looking down on us and judging us. Uh, she looks fantastic. She really does. Kita Senri doing an amazing job. Uh, the voice work is great. She is an infantry colorless tome user. All right. All right. Out of the gate. A, a relatively unique combination in the game, so that is immediately striking. Let's keep going and take a look at her weapon and skills. All right. So Order Sentence is a 14 might weapon, grants attack plus three, that's okay. At start of combat, if unit's HP is greater than or equal to 25%, or if bonus is active on unit, grants plus five to all stats to unit during combat and grants bonus to units attack during combat equal to the total bonuses on ally with the highest total bonuses within two spaces. Example, if an ally within two spaces has attack speed, defense res plus six, grants attack plus 24. <laughs> that is so interesting. Let's take a closer look. Okay, attack plus three, that's fine. It's not like amazing, but that, that's certainly a decent, uh, decent bonus to start with. Um, the condition basically being either she has more than or equal to 25% HP or a bonus active on her. That can be any kind of activated bonus. It can be um, a, a hone or a rally. Um, it can be some other effect from a harmonic or, or what have you. It can be anything like that. And as long as that either of those conditions are met, she gets plus five to all of her stats at, at a base level, a, an in-combat buff. And she gets a pseudo... Uh, a pseudo blade tome effect on her based upon her allies bonuses to stats 
So that's pretty fascinating. What immediately jumps out to me about this is that this is kind of a workaround for all of the lull skills that are out there. Because a lot lull skills and their ilk, any skill that nullifies activated bonuses on the enemy, that really just cripples blade tomes a lot. It, essentially, it reduces their ability to gain any benefits from the blade tome or the blade tome effect. Since Ashira doesn't need those bonuses on her, she just takes them from her ally, she herself gets the nullification of those those skills on the opponent um, for activated buffs on her, but she'll still get, still get her Blade Tome effect on Order Sentence. So it's, it's pretty interesting, which means that she also pairs very well with Blade Tome users because they also want activated buffs on themselves, and then she can just reap the benefits from them. Even, even without that, though, she gets plus five to all of her stats. Um, which is pretty decent. It's not it's not ridiculous. Uh, it's not stacking on a million effects like we we commonly see. But this is pretty unique, and it adds like again a team synergy effect that I think I, I personally appreciate. I, I like when there are team synergy effects on on weapons and skills and things like that. Glacius for the special indicates that she may have a ton of res. Uh, attack res ideal four. Uh, at start of combat, if unit's HP is equal to 100% or if bonus is active on unit, obviously that does synergize with the conditions for order sentence 2 so, or as well. So grants attack res plus 7 to unit during combat. At start of combat, if unit's e uh, HP is equal to 100% and bonus is active on unit, grants an additional attack res plus 2 to unit during combat. So the ideal skills granting a potentially up to plus 9 to uh, 2 stats, which is fantastic. Uh, of course, they are all conditional, but the conditions are pretty easy to meet. At least one of the conditions to get the plus seven is very, very easy to meet. Uh, lull speed res three, we're just talking about the lull skills, uh, inflicts speed res minus three on foe and neutralizes foe's bonuses to speed res from seals like fortify and rally during combat. So she can certainly take advantage of that. If she does have some decent speed, that means that she's going to double much easier with that speed check and the res uh, lull is also going to ensure that she does more damage. Now, Order's Restraint for the C-Slot. At start of turn, grants attack res plus 6 and null panic to allies within two spaces for one turn. At start of turn, if three or more allies are within two spaces of unit, grants attack res plus 6 and null panic to unit for one turn. Okay. Null panic. If unit is inflicted with panic, bonuses converted into penalties, neutralizes the converts bonuses on targets into penalties effect for one turn. Even though the effect is neutralized, the panic status remains and is treated as a penalty status. Interesting. Okay. So the null panic... <laughs> God, it's like it, it nullifies the nullification of the activated buff. We're getting into like Yu-Gi-Oh! territory of like, this counters this, which counters this, which counters this. So the null panic essentially nullifies the effects of the panic, which, nullify, which reverses the effects of the hone and rally. However, if any any skills are contingent upon you being penalized in some way and having a penalty on your character, um, those won't be affected by this because it'll still count as you having a penalty on the character. Um, but that aside, let's take a closer look again to, to the meat of Order's Restraint. So, at start of turn, it grants attack res plus 6 and null panic to all allies within two spaces for one turn. That's just, it does that straight up no matter what. If you have allies within two spaces, they all get attack res plus 6 activated and null panic activated, which... This is the first time we've seen we're seeing null panic. That's a very powerful effect. There's a lot of units out there, a lot of skills out there that can inflict panic, and panic's ultimate purpose is to just destroy um, activated buffs. And at start of turn, if three or more allies are within two spaces of unit, grants attack res plus six and null, null panic to unit for one turn. So to Ashira, she will get that bonus as well, as long as there are three or more allies with her. Which means for a standard skirmish, the whole team has to be within two spaces, which isn't a tall order, really. Um, and, and at the very least, she's going to grant this attack speed plus six to an ally and null panic on an ally, which in turn is going to give her blade tone bonuses to her order sentence so it does all kind of come full circle uh and does synergize with itself so honestly i like her kit it's very unique i feel like again that's in terms of longevity in a game like this stacking on numbers stacking on big fat numbers those those aren't really what people should be that impressed about um at least when considering the value of a character in terms of the long term it should be their unique application and their unique utility i think ashira in terms of like 
boilerplate what she does on the battlefield as far as raw numbers, it's not like incredibly impressive. I don't think it's really that impressive. We have blade tome users. We have ways to get around the nullification of blade tomes, at least to some extent. Blade tomes have been in the game since day one. Um, of course, she's a far more enhanced version of that with some premium skills. But what I'm what I'm getting at is that the numbers that she's reaching aren't absurd. You know, besides her stats, which are probably going to be amazing. Um, I think, again, it's the interesting elements of her, of how she interacts with her allies that I think is kind of the major draw for her. Um, and the, the fact that she has this null panic, and she alone has that right now, you know, who knows in the future they, there may be more characters that have that ability, but it's a pretty potent ability. Um, at the end of the day, uh, panic is kind of everywhere, and being able to just nullify it so that activated buffs are kind of back in back in full swing is, is kind of a big. It's a major move. It also, again, brings blade tomes back into the into the mix. Uh, as um, they, they've never left the mix, I, I'm going to argue they've never left the mix. I know some people out there think that they've pretty much been completely marginalized. I don't agree with that assessment, but um, but this brings them a lot stronger into the fold. So yeah, I mean, I like it. There's also the fact that she is a, uh, a colorless tome user, which again is pretty unique. Now, I would have preferred that she was a different movement type. If she was a flyer colorless tome user, that would be that would mean she was the first flying colorless tome user, um, because we already have Bramamond. So again, but you know, it, it, it's it's still a, a pretty rare combination. Um, so that she has that going for her as well. All right, so let's take a closer look at her attacking art here. I mean, she has an amazing figure. I mean, she looks fantastic here. I'm not going to lie. Um, but that but that aside, of course, the, this generous shower of, of lights coming down and this spiral is just, I don't know, it's, there's, it's very captivating. It's just beautiful how it's surrounding her. Um, and, and then, of course, there's that brilliant just uh, beacon of light right in front of her that she's using cast uh, that that from the heavens, that, that attack from the heavens. Um, yeah, I think this, this art is really gorgeous. And of course, she maintains this very holier than thou, very disappointed look on her face, which is very, very on character. So let's see the attacking animation. I love that it cuts to the sky. Oh my God, that's so cool. So again, more of that. Intelligence systems, if you're listening, more than that, please. Uh, and then here we are with her special art. Oh my God, that explosion of light. That's so cool. Just brilliant, beautiful. Her eyes are wide open, which of course means that it's about to get real. She is not holding back, and she's going to rain fire on us. So let's let's watch that. Here it comes. Bam. Exp oh god, it's so cool. All right. That's awesome. Um, and then let's go ahead and like skip to the actual complete banner. All right, so first and foremost, let's take a look at Colorless here, because that is, of course, Ashira's color, and she is the marquee character, the debut character on the banner. Uh, she'll debut alongside Legendary Corrin, very, very strong, and Brave uh, uh, Brave Claude, also very, very strong. Two excellent picks. The main issue with this is that Legendary Corrin has been available with some relative frequency. She was available on the A Hero Rises banner, where if you really wanted her, you probably got her there. But that said, Colorless is still very strong. Like, putting that aside, very, very strong if you're going for Ashira and getting either of the other two um, will give you some very valuable resources in the process. Let's take a look at Red. We've got Legendary Eliwood, Legendary Roy. So we've got the father and son together along with Azel. Um, that's, that's honestly pretty underwhelming. Don't get me wrong, all three of them have their place. All three of them have their uses. All three of them are viable. It's just that, I mean, compared to, I think, how the other colors stack up, I, I don't see how this uh, this won't be the worst color. But let's let's keep going here. Um, let's take a look at green. So green, we have Dadu, we have Triandra, and we have Freya. Uh, I know a lot of people out there have been waiting for Triandra and Freya to make a reappearance, and here they are. Uh, Dadu is also on here. He's not limited, but he's a very recent unit, um, and he's very powerful too, and he has a lot of uh, some pretty decent stuff as far as fodder is concerned. So, um, definitely up there as far as green is concerned. I would I would put it up there, maybe just under colorless. Uh, yeah, I would probably put it just under colorless. Uh, for blue, we've got Peony, we've got Legendary Azura, and we've got Ronin. 
Blue is a little tougher to evaluate, actually, because P- so Peony, everybody got for free. Uh, so everybody has a copy of Peony, but then again, people could be using a mer- you know, having a merge project for her. Uh, Legendary Azura, again, is still valuable today. I mean, she still has unique utility attached to her dance ability uh, to give it extended movement. Um, so she's still valuable there if you don't have her, even with her age and how long she's been in the game. Ronin is relatively new, but he's not limited. He has good stuff, but again, he's not... He's not limited in any capacity, and he's not, like, incredible. So, again, blue is full of really good utility, but everybody has Peony, and Legendary Azura is, again, she's been available for a really long time. So, I mean, most people who want her probably have her. Um, so, I, in, in terms of the colors, I, I would probably put Colorless at the top. Green is maybe, like, just below it. Um, blue I would put under that, and then red I would put under that. That's, so that would be my ranking. It would be colorless, then green, then blue, then red at the bottom. I will just mention the general rule of thumb on legendary slash mythic hero banners. The individual rate for each character is actually lower, despite the 8%, because it's split 12 ways. However, sniping on a particular color is perfectly fine, as long as you want or are fine with getting two out of the three characters on a color. Um, that gives you an overall higher percent chance of getting a target character, um, two out of the three, uh, than on a standard four percent banner. So it, it's generally worth it. Again, if you if you're okay with getting at least two of the characters on a particular color. For me personally, I think I'm going to do the poverty pull and get out. Um, I don't think I'm going to go in any harder than that because I don't really need any more legendary corins or clods. I wouldn't mind them. But uh, I, I think I'm, I'm willing to wait for Ashura to come back before I go in for her. So, yeah, I think I'm just going to wait it out. But let me know in the comments below if you're excited for Ashura, if you're excited for any of these characters, Freya's return, uh, which colors you're going to be going for on the banner itself. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more Fire Emblem Heroes content. We thank you all so much for watching and for taking time out of your day to spend with us. We really do appreciate it. Certainly hoping you're all staying safe, healthy, secure, and united out there, and wishing the very, very best for you, your family, and your friends. And until next time, let's predict those skies.